Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. One thing to kickstart this video instead of actually introing it is, you'll never see me prioritize a movement like this unless it's my midweek back session. Now, this is a session that I always train myself, literally never in with anybody. And it's probably my most enjoyable session out the whole week. As you guys know, I love to train back. I love to pull things. I love big heavy movements, whether they're at the start of the session or the end of the session. Ultraflex Durham is like back heaven. They've got everything and more and Coming from a leisure center with two back pieces of equipment and both of them being pull downs to all of this is just crazy. So this is by far my most favorite session out of the week. I come in, I prioritize back first, and then I'll finish on something for fun like a block pull or a rack pull or something like that. As you guys know, on a Saturday, I'll come in, I'll deadlift, and then I'll train back. But to be fair, not that I'm taking anything away from my back work after deadlifts, but it's just never the same because I, I come in and I pull seven, pl seven plus plates off the floor for reps and then I try and still full send back in which I do, but maybe not to the extent that I full send back on a Wednesday. So two back workouts every single week, one that I'll prioritize my actual main focus around tempo, execution on back movements, range of motion, this sort of fluffy shit but as you guys seen, pullovers first, then we'll move to the gym shop pull down in which, because actually the handles have been taken off these, you can actually strap up to them now, which just makes things 10 times easier, feels nicer, you can get the lat a lot shorter, and I actually don't mind them. So this has been in near the very start of my session for around maybe five, six weeks now. I've been able to take it up to five aside um, for around five or six good reps, in which I'm also focusing on this throughout my midweek back session is, actual focus around what I'm doing and not just going from here and trying to pull it because if I was doing that I could probably load maybe six seven plates on it and just literally pull it for my life but at the end of the day what I'm trying to get out of this especially on a movement so isolated like this um, if you're not fully locked in then you're not really going to get the most out of it and within this session it's about getting the most out of my back training so there was the intro to this YouTube video it's midweek back guys one session that you haven't actually seen on YouTube and we're going to full send it. There's no plan of attack. I'm going to just enjoy myself whilst picking movements throughout the session. But we're going to hit the back from all angles, as you guys know already. And let's just get it. Yep. Okay. Four and five's definitely on today. That's a good feeling. Yep. Okay. Let's do five. <coughs> this is what makes money. I am that one person that even when you've got a videographer, you still film your set. <laughs> oh man. I just hope I don't crumble here. Okay. Oh. 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 oh, fucking hell. Honestly, when me and AJ trained in Rotherham and we done this, don't get me wrong, it was maybe third or fourth in, but I was stuck on three plates for eight to 10 reps for two sets. Now, I've just done five plates aside for eight, nine maybe good reps. So, difference being, staying with a movement. Don't just think because you suck at a movement, that's a one way ticket to kind of put it to the side and not really focus too much on it. I've prioritized this and I've been able to get stronger on it. Do I love this as much as what I love a barbell row or things like that? Absolutely not. 
Is it beneficial? Yes. But as you'll see, the goal is to get as strong as possible on it, whilst be able, being able to maximize the most out of it by completing full range of motion, spending as much time as I can when short, and making sure that I'm, I'm stretching as much as what my lateral allow without my delt coming into play and trying to round. Um, spending that split second in that fully lengthened range as well to make sure that my change of direction is still nice. Guys, there's so many things that you can improve without having to just focus on adding an extra plate or adding an extra half a plate or adding an extra five reps to your set. Improve how you actually execute a movement and your physique will change, trust me. Okay, back. Ah, oh, man. Oh, 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 fuck. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Ah. Uh, huh. Good to see somebody's um, strong enough to lift the equivalent to two plates on the prime mid back row and not fucking put their weights back. Okay. Yep. We'll go five and a half before my top end sets. What I'm going to look to do here is just literally two, three reps max. To be fair, even two is a push. I just need to get into position, essentially perform one rep, maybe another one just to know exactly how things are feeling. And then I'll go from five and a half up to seven or something like that. It's feeling very good. It's feeling light. It's feeling nice. Um, and as you'll see, I've got this chest supported pad quite far back. So essentially, as I get it into position, you'll see that I'm leaning back rather than being all the way over it. Now, that doesn't mean that my range of motion's anything less. It just means that I'm literally in that position where I'm stretching my lat to the part of where it's fully stretched. So I'm not wanting to go from here to overextending. Today, that's not my goal. Today, my goal is to be here, keep my chest up nice and, and, and high, and be able to actually drive a lot of weight into my mid-back. That's my main focus today I've done. Um, sessions where I've came in and I've focused on that overextension and actually allowing that time spent in that length and range as, as far as I can get it. But today I don't want to do that. Today I want to actually stay in that position where I'm not going into the position where the machine gets really fucking heavy because the second that this prime machine gets into that length and range where it becomes really heavy, you're not getting out of the hole. And it's hard when you, you, you don't train with somebody on something like this because you really don't have somebody there to help you maybe get it out of that initial hard bit in the hole and then obviously get it short. So today we'll just be focusing on stretching my lats to where they can go, driving it back into my mid-back and job's done. Yep. <laughs> I feel quite sad leaving this wee 10 kilo plate so We'll just put him on the top and he can come for a ride as well. Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Yep, mine. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Oh. That actually felt surprisingly good. Sometimes what you tend to find is on, well, anything. You can overshoot the mark a little bit to the part of it feels 
not the best. Or you can hit that sweet spot where it just feels on the money and that felt really nice. So um, it goes to show that maybe every time I do this sort of load, I should have a lift off because I spend the majority of my time trying to get it out the hole, into position, then go. Whereas if I can have the focus off, just go, then it's happy days. But I'm happy enough with that. We'll do one back off set and then we shall move on. Here we go. Yep. Oh. 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 Ha, motherfucker. Oh. That was a back offset. Five plates for 20 plus. I'm starting to fucking question what was in my pre-workout. Oh. guys will do one back off to that and again anywhere from 15 to 20 reps realistically I took a nice set of between 8 and 12 there so I'm happy with that what I tend to find is whenever I get deeper into my sessions sometimes I prefer to work up in 8 to 12s rather than just working up to a really top end heavy working set and then dropping down from there so I'll do say overall maybe four or five sets of 8 to 12 reps the last couple of sets will be to all out failure. So I'll be hitting 12, but it might be a good three or four reps from failure in my warm ups. And then obviously I'll work up to a weight where that kind of eight to 12 rep range will be a failure set. And then maybe last and final set, I'll do um, a little bit of a lighter load. But again, it'll be probably eight to 12 or maybe 12 to 20, give or take, depending how it feels whenever I go into it, how much rest I take. Um, but that's definitely a big one as well, guys, that I want you guys to be able to see from my sessions as well is warm-up sets because I always get asked about warm-up sets, especially from clients who are maybe just jumping on board and, and they don't really know that much about training. They know enough, um, they know how to come in and, and perform some movements, but when it comes to um, warming up, it's a really tricky and sticky situation when realistically, guys, there's so many different warm-up protocols and approaches depending on what movement you're doing. Um, it's not a one fits all from a warm-up perspective. You have to take on board that some movements are gonna have a lot more warm-up sets than others. As you get deeper into your session, you'll find that you will do less warm-ups because you are a lot warmer. You can jump in a little bit heavier than what you can do at the start. But for example, if you're doing something um, that's very demanding, so a deadlift, for example, of course, I'm gonna say deadlift. Um, for me to put it into perspective, if I'm going up to 300 kilograms, that being seven plates aside, I'm doing seven warm-up sets before that. So I'm going up a plate at a time. One plate, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven into my working set. But for example, if your warm-up, um, or working set, I should say, sorry, is 140 kilograms, you could go from, say, 60 to 80 to 100, 120, 140. Um, but it's gonna, it's gonna vary depending on what movement you're doing. A more so bigger demanding movement might require a few more warm-ups. And again, the closer you get to your top end heavy sets, that's when you reduce the reps. Whereas if you're doing something a little bit smaller, more so like an isolation movement, um, I know a lot of people don't really like to use the term isolation anymore, but something not as big as a deadlift, something on a cable machine, you might find that you only need one warm up set, um, a few reps on that to get used to the movement, then you can go straight into your work. But just don't overcomplicate it, guys. Um, don't spend too much time warming up, but at the same time, don't just jump into your working set. Oh. 
can't tell already, we're very deep into the off season. We're almost a year in, which is pretty mental because only yesterday it feels like I was on prep. I think because my prep was so long, but we're almost a year. Come October, it'll be one full year, which you find prep goes so long, off season just, whew, before you know it, you're back into prep. But this off season's been different, guys. I promise, this off season's been so fucking different. Everything from food, from training, my mindset. Now, my mindset's never been fucking weak, but let me tell you, this off season's been just so different. Oh. Oh. Next time we come back, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. Everything's just different. Oh. 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 Okay. Take that up again. Enter workout, guys. Every single session. My go-to. We've got no code V2. Level up V2. And carb up for my intra carbohydrates. So that is literally every single session, guys. That is off-season. That is prep. Some sessions I'll do a little bit more carbohydrates, but my no-code V2, level up V2 always stays the same. Um, as you guys all know, no-code is just my essential amino acid, and level up is a performance-based product that essentially kills off DOMS. So I'm able to recover a lot more efficiently, a lot quicker, and it allows me to come back into my future sessions of the weekend and completely send it. But HR Labs, as always, guys, I have worked with HR Labs for years. I'm literally losing count how long I've worked with HR Labs, Unrivaled, Strength Shop, Gasp. Gasp, obviously I only started working with Gasp last year, but um, I've always wore Gasp. So once I get something that I like, once I get something I know works, feels good, feels comfy, guys, I'm riding that for years. HR Labs and Unrivaled, um, Kiffy 15 for HR Labs, Gasp, Better Bodies, Strength Shop, Kiffy West, you know the score, straps, belts everything um, but enter workout as always you know the score HR labs for that one um, and Kiffy 15 to get a bit of discount on it Shh. okay yep oh oh okay let me drop that one next hardcore corner go 15s that'll take me to 250 we'll see how 250 feels and we'll go from there okay okay Good. We'll go to eighty. They're either going to stay really tight and on, or it's going to be a repeat of Rotherham 2021, and there's going to be a fucking explosion.
Oké, okay, ik Hey, come on, Kef. Let's fucking see this now. It's a great place. Okay. One thing I will say, that 280 felt harder than what 280's ever felt. But take it on board guys, I'm doing these at the end of my session for a bit of fun. So whatever energy is left is whatever energy we use. So I've progressed on pretty much all of the movements that I've done today that I would want to progress on or want to do a little bit more on or want to do better on. And with that being said, because I've progressed on them, you have to really take on board that there's probably a little bit of energy that would have went into these, taken out on them movements. So take that on board guys, especially if you are logging as well. If you are progressing on movements consistently, um, you, you could still take an adequate amount of rest, but it still might not be enough to get to the later part of your session and still progress. So if you don't progress, don't kill yourself over it. Don't allow that to dictate the rest of your session or week session for that matter. Just move the fuck on because you'll be fine. Oh! Motherfucking rap. Done, guys. Back. Finito, midweek back. Back in some rack pulls. Um, very, very, very successful session today. Not that it really matters as long as I come in, get the job done, whether it's a good session or a feeling pretty shitty session, we come in and get the job done. That's what it's all about. You have to take on board that we're not going to feel um, amazing 24 7. And if you do feel amazing 24 7 then you're absolutely training like a four-year-old girl and if you're training like a four-year-old girl then you're not going to get strong so some days we feel really good some days we feel relatively shit but every day we get the job done and that is going to be uh that's going to conclude this youtube video so as always guys i hope you did enjoy it if you did and you were able to take something from it don't forget to drop the video a like subscribe to the channel if you're new because we're still shooting for 10,000 subscribers and I'm spending a lot of fucking money on trying to get 10,000 subscribers. Um, so drop the channel a subscribe and turn on post notifications because then it means that you'll never fucking miss a video of my fat little face fully sending 300 kilo on a bar. And I'll see you all in the next video.